Ángel Grillo. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, uh, Señor Luis Chaparro. What's what's happening on the uh, Texas Mexico border? All good, man. Trying to trying to keep busy, but uh, but not too busy. So so we have time to jump into a new narco report episode. This is what the the sixth episode. Narco report number six, giving the uh, the real the real info, the real intel on We're... the narco war drugs crime. We're committed, you guys. We're committed. It's it's already been six. Uh, we we thought we were not gonna have even the second one. You know, we we tried the first one and and probably thought like we're not gonna make it to the second one, but now it's the sixth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's a lot of lot of love. I uh, appreciate all the uh, support come from people. Um, interested in hearing the kind of inside story. So we got another episode with a cracking question of intrigue, which is which is. Are cartels, Mexican cartels, selling fentanyl in Mexico? It's a big one. It's a big one considering Mexican cartels are accused of, and let's face it, they are moving a lot of fentanyl to the United States of America, killing a lot of people. So are they selling it in Mexico itself? That's a big one. Before we get into that one, what's the usual uh, hype? You want to tell tell the people? Yes, please, guys, subscribe to this channel, E1 Grillo TV. Also, go to my own channel at Luis Chaparro. We're putting one episode each week on each one of our channels. This is going out. Of course, if you're watching, you know this is on E1 Grillo's TV channel. Next week, it's going to be on mine at Luis Chaparro. And also, don't remember that you're going to get the good, good stuff, original reporting on Crash Out Media. Dot com isn't that right absolutely yeah just just follow follow our stuff um so get this question let's let's go back a bit and this is it's kind of a, a crazy story of the different drugs that have gone through mexico to the united states over the years um we have um oh you know all the way going back really opium is the first one mm -hmm. um which then turns into heroin And then marijuana, I mean, marijuana going back a long time as well, but we get the boom of marijuana in the 1960s. And then cocaine, 1970s, 80s, you know, real 90s becomes massive. Mm -hmm. Crystal meth, 2000s. And then the last most recent addition has been fentanyl. Yeah. So one thing that we both discovered in our reporting, you know, is that There have been times of prohibitions in Mexico by the drug traffickers of selling these drugs locally. And, and I had this going, um, you know, talking to a, 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 an older trafficker who's doing jail time um, and about the cocaine in Tamaulipas in the 1990s. And for a while, eight, for the 1980, late 80s, for a while it was like you couldn't get cocaine easily in the streets of Tamaulipas. It was, it was a, the, the, the traffickers themselves said, don't sell it. So you heard, you've heard the same thing in about what is historically. Yes, exactly. I think, I think also during, during like these, uh, this period where coking was still not huge, but it was something already. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the cartel was enforcing the prohibition of selling and using cocaine in, in Juarez. Uh, for, I think first they put out something like, This is this is to make money and not to have fun with, uh, but also that it's gonna hurt the Mexican cities, whatever. I'm not sure if this what happened with, with cocaine and probably with heroin before or based to the public attention or based to a government truce, right? Like where the Mogam said, it's like, okay, I'm gonna let you mm. work, but promise me you're not gonna sell this shit in Mexico, right? So it's pretty interesting. So, like, so like cocaine back in the day and then more recently with crystal meth it was the same thing yeah. before we get to fentanyl with crystal meth there was this idea like a lot of and that was when you really had cartels and they were saying you know you can't don't sell it here don't use it here yeah. so yeah so, you, so so why did they what's their motivation for that like like you were saying it was you had an issue of, of their public relations they want to seem like the good guys to local yeah. people Yeah, and I they lose that's... that support if they're selling drugs on the street. Yeah, I think that's 
that's a, that's a good part of it, right? Like the you know, like how they how they say about kidnappings and extortions. All mm. of the Mexican cartels are not kidnappings, and they arrive to a near turf to eliminate all of those rats that are kidnapping and, and killing people and doing extortion, but they all do. So I think it's sort of like the same thing with, with, with the, with a new drug, you know, like, yeah, we're not going to do this, uh, but we, we're going to get rid of, uh, of, of the guys who are actually doing harm to our society, whatever. So, so they also like say, we're the good guys. They're the bad guys. They kidnap and extort. Now, there's quite a big jump between, I mean, you know, kidnapping and extortion are very severe antisocial crimes, which really hurt the public. But selling, I mean, selling drugs, I mean, it's a mixed, I mean, you could say I mean, there's a huge number of deaths there to do with fentanyl, but going back to selling like cocaine, I mean, do they have, I mean, you know, do these guys have any kind of social conscience where they really believe they don't want to sell drugs to people in their own communities? I, I I honestly think they do. I think they do have a certain grade of social conscience, right? Like we know mm. this is harming. We're probably not going to, you know, like willingly, quote unquote, we're not going to push this willingly, whatever. But uh, but at the end, I mean, all they care is about money, right? If it's going to make money, if it's going to make one people or one single person like millionaire, it's not going to keep any shits, right? I think probably one or two, you know, of those guys hold off for a bit. And then when the first guy comes and says, like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to sell it on the streets. They all go like, ah, well, he's selling it, he's doing it, whatever. We're, we're just it's going to start doing it too. So I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think one reason, like, the rule broke, I agree that, what, you know, once they, once they get into this, everyone's doing it. But once I think, one of the ways I think the rule broke is... So I remember uh, Jesus Blanco Nelas, yeah, a yeah, legendary Tijuana journalist. journalist. And he um, told me this phrase, and he still kind of believed this in in, in the 2000s, or in the early 2000s. He said, um, it would be like, Grillo, you heard this phrase about cocaine. The Colombians make it, the Mexicans traffic it, and the gringos take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like okay. That was uh, what they saying, blood in, blood out. Cocaine is America's cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so, so you know, so so like at that point, he was they still kind of this belief. But I think I think even in that time, he said that it was it's that was already not true. You already start. I mean, one of the things that I saw early arriving in Mexico was people using crack, and I was like surprised. What people using crack on the streets in Mexico City? Um, you know, even like taxi drivers I had who would like take out like a can and 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 and, 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 and have a little hit of crack. <laughs> yeah. uh, and like it'd be like, you want some? <laughs> yeah. Um so, so like so one of the reasons I think it came on the streets as well was because you start you, you build up Mexico as a big trafficking, you know, the Mexican trampoline, big place to traffic and bounce cocaine in the United States. And then you start it's easier the you the the the, the Sinaloa cartel, the, the the Mexican cartels get the the brick of cocaine, the bar for Colombians, for like two thousand dollars a kilo, mm-hmm. yeah, and they transport it, and then they're like they got people working for them, so like we've got to pay these people, so like okay, I could pay you in cash, or I could pay you in this brick of cocaine, mm-hmm. only cost me two thousand bucks. Now that person might sell it on the streets in Mexico. And turn it into ten thousand bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it's cheaper for the person, and it's like it's more money for the person receiving it. It's the it's the, the narconomics, you know, the economics of drug trafficking. And so that way, they end up like selling on the streets, and then, like you say, like once they start doing it, everyone does it. And now, you know, you drive around a lot of uh, northern Mexico, you know, every little village, and all the you know old guys. Old guys yeah. be sitting there doing doing lines and, and yeah 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 I mean you know. and, and and another another factor also is that there is a lot of a lot of cocaine that doesn't make it to the U.S. get seized and sometimes Mexican authorities mm-hmm. have good good all corruption within within U.S. officials right so they sell it back and they resell it in Mexico they're just like yeah we just seized this fucking load we're gonna give it back whatever we need it whatever. 
and then they sell it back to another or the same owner and and that's drug that that stays in mexico within border cities and then sells super cheap right because i mean they they're like yeah it's not going to sell the same price as across the border so let's just get rid of it sell it for cheap and yes uh, it, it starts hitting the streets really really quick that's one of the one of the things about border cities is that you can get very decent decent to good cocaine for half the price right across the border so like decent to good cocaine half the price in mexico than in the united states like yes exactly. as, soon, as soon as it as soon as it goes over the border it doubles in price yes and then yeah. and then it, and, it, and it, as soon as they, they flip it over the border yep. now so we have cocaine is now like no one says they don't sell cocaine and, and that's a you know a bit, and then and then you're crystal meth which is now so crystal meth they initially said as well we don't sell it here um, Nazario Moreno, one of the big crystal meth traffickers in in Michoacan, El Mas Loco would like say you know apparently would say like, but then they the, the people who are making it, cooking it, in they start selling it and, and and you know just I guess it's kind of hard if they're cooking it, cook, people are cooking up meth, then they got it in front of them, they start taking it, you know they start yeah, taking yeah, this shit yeah. and selling it on the streets as well and 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 like, so then now there's still kind of like there's still a crystal meth kind of a double like discourse there you still have people saying claiming they don't sell crystal meth yeah but it, yeah. it seems very available though yeah i mean in, in in ciudad juarez that's been a war forever like for probably the last five five six seven years uh, the uh the local cartel the juarez cartel has been enforcing allegedly the the prohibition of selling meth in the city right because they, they want to get rid of all the cristaleros because that's that was one of the first things that they started putting out as a propaganda when the sinaloa cartel arrived to the city to fight against the juarez cartel they're like these guys are bringing crystal meth although meth was already in the city right but but this was one of the what were the, the strongest propagandas these are the guys who are bringing in crystal meth and this is super dangerous for a community we do so coke we do so we whatever you want but we don't take crystal meth because this is bad and this is going to make a lot of like thieves and extorters and kidnappers and this is going to break our society, whatever. And I think that was a selling point they were taking to the authorities to support the Juarez cartel to kill Sinaloans alleging they were cristaleros, right? Which is probably well, just propaganda. Right. So, so it's just an excuse to say like, we're going to kill a bunch of drug dealers. These cristaleros, they're spreading poison in our communities. We, you know, we, we, we're the police giving them justice, but really just because, you know, they're selling crystal meth, but not our crystal meth. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah. Now, I was in Colima, and in Colima, there's um, a big issue with yeah. selling crystal meth. Um, you know, interesting, because Colima, in you know, Manzanillo, the biggest port in Mexico, a lot of the uh, precursors are all coming through there. And a lot of it's being sold right out um, in the city of Colima, um, in uh, what's the other little town there, Tucan, uh, with, with begins with a T. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's a uh, 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 ah shit they got hit by by by, by a hurricane. Uh, yeah, yeah, like to, uh, well, so, uh, and anyway, the uh, those these the, the city of Colima. There's other 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 kind of town there now. I think a lot of people buying that were like agricultural workers. Yeah. People working in the fields and stuff started taking it a lot. Truck drivers, mm -hmm. long haul truck, and, and and then one of the guys who owned a truck company, he showed me a video of like this truck driver that was suddenly like phased from like being high on crystal meth mm -hmm. and like stumbling out of this truck. Um, so like it's a, it's an issue there, and a lot of people selling on the streets, mm -hmm. um, the, the 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 dealers or the, the pushers as they say pushadores, uh, are, are women, are young women. And so a lot of a lot of the like Colima's number one in femicides Holy or shit. killing of women, but a lot of this apparently is young women who are selling meth or you know killed often between tit for tat with different you know gangs, basically mm -hmm. at gang level groups selling them and fighting over that local trade. So so it's been a, I mean like with crystal meth, I would say you're seeing. Now, it, it's still kind of limited in terms of the regions of Mexico and, and to certain sectors of Mexican society. It's not like right across Mexican society. But I'd say with crystal meth, you are seeing some quite considerable social damage yeah. from crystal yeah. meth selling 
in Absolutely. particularly in you know in, in Juarez, Tijuana, but other places, other rural places among you know working class people like these truck drivers, agricultural workers, builders, and that kind of thing. So quite a lot of damage there, yeah. No, yeah, definitely. I think I think crystal meth without a, a dot. I mean, I'm not saying cocaine is it's not making harm to 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 the society at a, at an addiction level, but I think the price of cocaine makes it through the people who has probably more resources to get better to pull it off, right? As an addiction. Uh, but uh, but a lot of like crystal meth users, the, the price point of 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 meth, it's absolutely different from the price point of uh, of, of cocaine, right? So I think that hurts another sector of the population without a lot of access to resource to stop using or to get better or to basically get money to fund their own addiction, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but also I think, you know, with, with with crystal meth, there's a lot worse secondary effects of crystal meth um, uh, in terms of people's behavior um, when they're taking a lot of meth. Now I don't know if it if it has an impact. You know, you get a lot of young sicarios, you know, taking meth and stuff. Does that yeah. affect their behavior? Does that make them even more loose cannons than they already are? I mean, they don't really need it to be violent, but it's an extra kind of layer on top of this kind of crazy behavior they have, where they kind of go in and people are paranoid, and people are strung out, and and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well. Yes, I mean, I, I, I do think that, as you say, like crystal meth is definitely a different kind of drug and it has a strong impact. And I think that's, that's again, like the propaganda most of the drug cartels use, right? Like, look what, what, what it does to a society, look what it does to the, to, to the people. But at the same time, they, I mean, it's, it's this double discourse they, uh, that the cartels have, right? Like they say, no, we, we don't sell this shit. We want them forced the, the uh, prohibition of crystal meth, whatever. We don't give it to our soldiers or, or sicarios because it fucks with their head. And we do put our own, um, uh, como se llama este, rehab centers, right? Where we bring yeah. our people, where we bring our sicarios to get better, to get out of that addiction. But at the same time, it's, I mean, they're making shit tons of money of, of, of local markets selling yeah. crystal meth. Now, those rehab centers are weird. I, I never, never quite understood. Uh, I've been in a lot of rehabs, but that whole kind of issue of rehabs and rehabs kind of owned by cartels. I never really understood that. They they do own a lot. I mean, at least for what I know in Ciudad Juarez, they do own a, a big chunk of the of the of the rehab centers in in Ciudad Juarez. And the reason is they Ciudad Juarez, like many other cities in, in, in border or northern Mexico, it's it's a huge plaza for the local market of drugs, right? Yeah. Probably more than half the revenue they make from getting drugs across, it's made by the local market. It's a, it's a, it's a strong local market. And that is, of course, worked by local pushers, right? A lot of like puchadores, a lot of like street sellers. They supposedly they 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 should not use that shit because they then get hooked and then they they steal from their their own jefe their own products yeah and they don't sell well they don't last a lot long right and i think that's why they do own a lot of these rehab centers for their own people for their own pushers for their own sellers to right. force them to go into rehab and then put them back in the streets to sell uh, and then you, know, you had weird stuff where you get like massacres of uh, rehab centers yeah so, so someone will go into like a rehab center and kill all these. So it was like, why are they killing people in rehab? Was it a terror? Because it, it's very weird in, in a way you think a cartel who sells drugs and owns a rehab center to get you off drugs. Yeah. It's like off your own your own product. It's like damaging your own product. Yeah, yeah. At, at some point, they, they started killing a lot of like people inside these centers because of that, because they were selling, they were cristaleros from the streets that were put in, in these rehab centers. So they can get better rehab, and they go back to the streets and selling. And the other cartel was like, "Oh, you know what? Like, you know what? Where we can find a lot of cristaleros at, at, a, at a single same place that will just fucking hit the, one of these rehab centers." It's kind of a bizarre, you know, one of the bizarre surreal parts of the whole, the whole drug war. But then getting up to the, to the question right now about fentanyl. So now fentanyl, this drug has come in. I mean, it's been around. Uh, I mean, fentanyl has been around since the 1950s, been around being made in, in the first element in Mexico's 15 years ago or more. 
Well, really, it's only really blown up as a massive mm-hmm. thing in Mexico. The yeah. last three, three, four years that it suddenly exploded. And there's devastating level of deaths in the United States. So, like, you know, 107,000 overdose deaths in the United States in 2021, 70,000 of them with fentanyl in the system. I mean, it's a crazy term. Now, Sinaloa, because of the big people who are making fentanyl in Mexico, the biggest, Sinaloa cartel, Jalisco New Generation cartel. Mm-hmm. So Sinaloa, we've both spent a lot of time there. What do the dealers in Sinaloa say about selling fentanyl? Exactly the same as they were saying with all the other fucking crimes that are hurting the local people, right? They they said that they're enforcing the prohibition of selling fentanyl in Mexico because it's a product made to be exported to the U.S. exclusively. They they also, I mean, one of the one of the their their, their probably talking points is that. Mexicans don't even want, they're not enticed to use fentanyl, right? But they're, they're, they say like, no, there is not, not a, a market for fentanyl. So we don't push this shit in Mexico. Mexicans don't like it. Gringos like it. And uh, so that's why we're not selling here. Uh, records say that like at least the city of Culiacán has really low records of fentanyl use. Now, again, this is official records. So who the fuck really knows? You know, it, I mean, it mm. could probably be bigger. But they're, you know, putting some makeup to these fucking uh, figures to to make it look like only they only found two or three users, I think, last year of, of fentanyl in, in the whole city of Culiacán, which uh, which I'm not sure, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, it's interesting that argument and I've heard the argument as well saying, oh, no, it's not that they don't want to sell it. It's the Mexicans don't want this stuff. That's yeah. why they sell it to America. There's no, nobody's asking for fentanyl. Yeah. But it's kind of that seems kind of a weak argument. If you've got this drug, you're making it in massive quantities, and really nobody's going to want it. Um, but like, I do think that it does seem to be like in different communities, and I, and I don't really mean just like ethnic communities, but just different groups of people at different times have different drugs they want. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know the crack epidemic. You know, obviously hit poor African African American communities very hard. Heroin going back has kind of hit, you know, a range of people, you know, right across the board. But a lot of, you know, like crystal meth and then fentanyl, a lot of it's kind of poor white communities. Mm-hmm. Crystal meth is also really big in Asia. Um, and then fentanyl is, you know, here in a, in a poor white communities or heroin. So there may be sometimes that this different groups of people. Okay. So, but I, I, I do think the sense in Sinaloa is that there isn't much fentanyl being sold on the streets in Sinaloa. Yeah. There's not like I think it's probably correct that at the moment there's not a big use there, and the, the kind of ban there kind of holds reasonably. There might be one or two people who sell it, yeah. Um, but the difference is two particular places where we've seen big sales, we're seeing big sales right now Tijuana and Ciudad Juarez, yeah. Well, the, I mean, Tijuana, I think it's the one that has been hitting. The, the worst, right? Tijuana is is uh, I think it, it more than it's more it's more it's up more than two hundred or three hundred percent than last year the use the use of fentanyl, uh, year after I think for, from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two, uh. So Tijuana is is really seeing a huge spike in the use of fentanyl, and uh and and of course that means that if that's what the official figures are. It's probably wider, right? And, and it's probably getting sold in biggest quantities. And now Ciudad Juarez, I think it's second place. We just recently started seeing a, a peak uh, this year in, in 2023. Right. So so now in, in Tijuana, my sense is that there's no ban on selling fentanyl. They just say we sell it here. Now, one thing in Tijuana is you get a lot of uh, people who have lived in the United States and get deported back to Tijuana, a lot of deportees. Mm -hmm. So they've already got, like, a lot of them have already got, like, a drug problem and a problem with with, with pills, you know, with downers, fentanyl, you know, whatever. And and I went to the area um, that was that canal area, which goes, Mm -hmm. kind of cuts across the border and then goes to the ocean, um, where a lot of people would hang out there and take drugs, and there's a soup kitchen there. And, yeah, a lot of them taking pills, um, I mean, in mix, they're sold cheaply. Yeah. I mean, very cheaply. It's like things like, you know, 50 pesos um, or even, you know, even, even less, you know, for, 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 uh, 
you know, like two dollar fifty, two buck fifty, basically three bucks for a, for a, for a, for a for a hit there. And th- and that's the thing, like that's that's creating a strong local market, right? Enticed by low costs of of of, of the price of fentanyl, a lot of people from the U.S. Are gonna just get try to get across the border to find these drugs, and then local drug dealers are gonna say, like, you know what, there is a market for this shit in Tijuana, so we're better produce more shit for this Mexican city. Also, I think what's happening a lot, what is happening in Juarez that I know from official sources, uh, a, a guy we we both met uh, on, on your trip here, he was telling me that the, the effect of fentanyl in this city, I mean, the, the reason why it is starting to sell the city is because of, of what we just talked about cocaine. Like a lot of these seized seizures in, in, in uh, the border, they are sent back to the Mexican authorities and then the Mexican authorities sell it back to the original, uh, you know, traffickers, and then they put it out in the in in, in the Juarez streets with. Uh, I think they're they're putting it on the same stream as heroin users, and not so much on the same stream as uh, cocaine users. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, one thing that really struck me, you know, I spent a lot of time going back to the nineteen eighties in the UK around people who use heroin. And, you know, you could talk to people who use heroin. And back then when heroin was the big scary name, you know, yeah. you'd hear heroin, it was like, oh, you know, scary. And now heroin is like the old school, not so bad stuff. And fentanyl is the real bad stuff. Um, but like, you know, I thought I could talk to them. One thing I noticed around the the, the people who are high on um, or taking fentanyl, taking crystal meth, taking this mixed stuff, they were pretty out of it. They were pretty checked out. Um, I mean, you know, it's kind of harsh words, but kind of zombified. I mean, it was hard to talk to them much to get much of a thread of conversation. Um, you know, these effects, these are strong drugs. Yeah. I, 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 you know, going back to Sinaloa, these weekends, one of uh, one, one of my sources in, in, in Sinaloa told me that there was a halt of production of fentanyl. And I asked him, like, if he thought that was going to last. He's like, yeah, Los Chapitos order everyone to stop producing fentanyl. And I was like, dude, this could be a game changer. This, this ch- could change the whole fucking thing. Do you think it's really happening? It's like, yeah, it, it's really happening. No one's cooking fentanyl because of higher up orders by, by Los Chapitos. And then I think uh, around uh, Tuesday, he reached out again and he's like, no, nah, well, we're, we're back at it. Like literally the halt, the halt, they lifted the, the, the halt and we're cooking again uh, fentanyl again. So I think it didn't, didn't last. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with, with fentanyl. It's like so, you know, I mean, so the, the threat now for Mexico is massive. Yeah. Um, when we say fentanyl is, you know, it, it, we can't hit this home hard enough. So everyone kind of sees these drug stores, they're like, yeah, 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 fentanyl, heroin, crystal meth. Yeah. This is game changer shit, fentanyl. The devastation is done. I mean, in the United States, right? Um, you know, the Republicans are wrong when they said we've got to bomb Mexico and all this kind of stuff. They're wrong about that. It's, it's kind of, we, we talked about that. It doesn't go anywhere. But they're right that this is a big problem. This is a big, crazy issue, killing a lot of people. And this is this is a threat for Mexican society. You know, with all the other issues and problems Mexican society has had, um, people getting on fentanyl. I mean, there, there is something that, like, would, you know, why are people taking fentanyl? You know, People take uppers, crystal meth, cocaine, to get a bit high, just to hang out with their friends and get a bit high, you know, or you know, it's, or sometimes they can work as well. People take it to, but taking fentanyl is a bit of a different mentality because you're going down. Yeah, it's like you're and, depressed. Yeah, and definitely harder than heroin. I mean, because heroin is also a a, a depressor, right? Um, fentanyl, it's it's of course, as we have read a lot, uh, fentanyl is it's it's worse. It's it's a stronger depressant. So so I think yeah, I mean. When I wrote one of the first pieces about like how fentanyl was hitting the U.S. strong, I kept thinking and writing about like how this was probably a bigger threat to Mexico than to the U.S. Because it was just a matter of time that this becomes an epidemic in Mexico, a place where the dynamics, you know, are are very much different than than the dynamics in the U.S. The dynamics in the U.S. I think it's for the most part a, a health problem, but in Mexico it becomes a health slash security issue that uh that it's it's really complicated to entangle when it, it hits wide you know yeah i mean in, in mexico city you hear a lot on the radio all the time like back the hit don't don't take fentanyl don't take fentanyl 
and they have you know, they have a lot of these 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 uh, you know adverts. They know one they have one the Nazis were high on crystal meth. They even have one of the one of the adverts they use yeah, like yeah. to say don't take drugs in Mexico City. They go like los Nazis. <laughs> Okay, so like, and it's like, and like the crystal method, and, and it has um, you know, they have a lot of anti-drug adverts though, like um, you know, like um, they have one where they say like Sicario, Buchona, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that kind of, like you're playing, you're playing lottery, you know, with, with the uh, and they're like saying don't, you know, don't. Um, I don't know if that works, but it, it's it's a real issue that Mexico needs to worry about, um, yeah, and, and and even even like tell these, you know, like. The cartel people. I mean, you shouldn't. <laughs> it's, it's bad for anyone, but yeah, don't. Sell, I think don't I think we're stuff. we're already too late. I mean, we're already too late for that. I think it started spiking in Tijuana. It started spiking in in, in Ciudad Juarez. Uh, it's just a matter of time, and I think I think honestly, at, at this point, I think we're too late to try to stop something that it's gonna become wider in Mexico. That's gonna be happening a lot, and who the fuck knows what the effects are gonna be. Yeah, I mean, it just it, it keeps raising the temperature on this on this whole issue, and maybe it kind of raises it to the point of like, I mean, in some ways, the fentanyl epidemic in the United States is raising the temperature in the whole situation because then it's then saying it's then pushing the Republicans and saying we've got to call them cartels terrorists, and so it's kind of raising the whole situation. So that's the answer to the question. Um, long answer, long saying, answer to that question. I think yeah. I think it was it was a good question. The deep answer to 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 a question, but yes, an important one. That so now we've got another question. Um, so yeah, let's the, uh, let's to, try to, to use to... our last five minutes to answer our guy Billy five 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 seven who posted a I... question on our last video on my I channel. Me... How about I ask this? I ask this to you, and then and then you you, you can answer it first. Okay. All right. right okay. Right. Okay, Billy. Hi there, Billy. Thanks for the question. Mr. Five five seven five 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 seven seven. One thing I've wondered is what the pay grade for these Sicarios and cooks. They show off fancy stuff, but I would think they're the higher up are the money makers, and the rest is a lie. But what do you think, Luis Chaparro? I think you, Billy five 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 seven seven, are absolutely right. I mean, most of the flashy things are probably the middle ranks of the cartel because probably they were, i mean the real high robs they don't even sh well you know like flash stuff now the pay grade it really it really changes i mean it, it really depends a lot of them are freelancers right like they're, they're getting paid for for gigs if, if you, you're gonna kill someone it really depends on who you are who the target is and yeah a lot of them like it mostly in sinaloa in sinaloa state they do are on a payroll that can varies a lot, like from five thousand pesos, which is what like uh, two hundred and fifty bucks, probably, probably even more, like three hundred US dollars, um, a month, up to you know like five thousand US dollars a month. So it it really it really varies, but I think it's moving more into a gig economy, right? Like 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 a freelancer economy. Um, I I don't know if you've heard something something different from different places in 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 Mexico, uh, Ewan. Yeah, so look, I, I say this a lot of times that you know people think of the movie of you know, the series Narcos and and and, and the, the, the Pablo Escobar stuff or you know the the big Guadalajara cartel, the big capos and they're like mansions and you know twenty beautiful girlfriends and flash cars and private planes, and the vast majority live nothing like that at all. Like it's like any industry. I mean, I mean, I mean, like the McDonald's industry. You got like all the people who own McDonald's and the big CEOs and the big kind of people who, who make millions of McDonald's, and you got people who just like work in McDonald's selling burgers and selling fries. Um, yeah. So you think this is a big industry? Everyone must be rich, but it's only some people. Now you get people sometimes. I mean, yeah, they're price, sometimes cigarios. They'll make, you know, I have to check out some of the recent ways. Used to be crazy stuff like fifteen hundred pesos, you know, a week. Um, yeah. yeah, to like you know, like you know, like a hundred bucks a week. So they, you know, they, they're they're making sometimes better money than other people in their same communities, um, working in the factory or working in the fields. Um, I mean, you make things like two hundred pesos a day working in the fields in Michoacan, and some of them will get that same kind of money. Like, well, they make some more like cooking up, but sometimes you get people who are like, um, get to like mid level where they're, where they're like or, or, or above that lowest rung, where they're starting to 
in, you know, make them move their own money around a bit as well. So they might start to um, be like a Sicario or be like a cook and then maybe have their own corner where they're selling some dope yeah, on exactly. the corner. Yeah. So then they start to make make money and and and, and they, they start to get flashy. But uh but yeah, Billy, that was a good question. And, good question, um, Billy. And guys, remember that to drop your question here below this video that we can answer on the next week. Yeah, just, just fire your questions. We'll get to them all in the end. If it's episode number seven or episode 77 or episode 777, <laughs> we're on the case. We're on the case like Sherlock Holmes. We're not we're not pl planning to go anywhere, guys. So put, put your question, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and keep watching these weekly episodes because we're not going anywhere. We're really committed to do this shit until the end of the world. We want to discover the solution to drugs and crime and cartels. You know, once they, they name us president of yeah. the world. Absolutely. And probably, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll probably never find that, but we're going to have a lot of fucking fun trying to figure out what the shit is happening in, in Mexico with these criminal organizations. So there you go. Subscribe to Luis Chaparro channel. And you know the data. Yes, and go and subscribe to this channel, You want Grillo TV, if you haven't already. I know that a lot of you guys are just watching the fucking videos for free and not subscribing. So go and subscribe to, to, to this channel. Go and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to check out Crash Up Media and see you guys next week. I mean, it's free to subscribe as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's free. It's free. It's, it's just, you just right, literally you. need to click the subscribe button. It doesn't take much. <laughs> That's how we like it. Be, 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 be. Okay, yeah. we love you. Peace, peace out.